President Biden and the White House in spin overdrive, brushing off everything from inflation, his age, to even laughing off requests for bank records. According to the Washington Post, families crossing the U.S. border illegally reached an all-time high in August. But the White House claims President Biden has done what he can when it comes to the crisis. Watch. Look, the president has done what he can from from here, from the federal government, from the White House, to put forth and manage our border in a safe and humane way. Let's welcome to the show Florida Congresswoman Kat Kamek. Congresswoman, good to see you. Uh, that to me sounds like maybe in a week of many lame excuses, the absolute worst one that I've heard yet. <laughs> it, I don't know how else to say except for that that's a lie. Straight out, that is a lie. I myself have been to the border nine times. And nine times I have been told by Border Patrol agents, by Texas DPS, this is the worst that they have seen in their 20, 25, 30 year careers. If he was doing everything that he could to secure that border, we wouldn't have a policy of paroling people into this country, upwards of 7 million people at this point. We wouldn't have a policy of allowing people to come into this country with zero background checks. He would have re-implemented Title 42 instead of getting rid of it. He would have kept the Remain in Mexico policy. He would have kept all of the the Trump era policies to secure this border. Instead, he did away with every single one of them because he doesn't want a secure border. He wants an open border. That is why he is the trafficker in chief. So that what's in, is a fact. Yeah. And, and what's interesting is you got more and more Democrats now pleading for help over this crisis. Now, he says yeah. he's done all he can, but he didn't even meet, he didn't even meet with New York Governor Kathy Hochul when she came to D.C. to discuss what's happening in her state, where I am right now. New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy, another one, he says his state can't handle all the migrants entering New York City. This, as the Biden administration is considering the Atlantic City Airport for housing. Congresswoman, I mean, you've got more Democrats basically saying this isn't working. Now, my problem with that is they're just asking for money. We need more than money, yeah. but this is becoming a bipartisan outcry at this point. Yeah, I mean, think about this. You have thousands, thousands and thousands of illegals who have come into our country. We don't know who they are, and they are using the resources that have been set aside. Take, for example, the, the money that was put into FEMA for homeless veterans programs were redirected for plane and bus tickets for illegals. We have people in our country that are hurting. And here we have now in New York City, for example, housing these folks in schools, in elementary schools, in, yeah. in public safety buildings. This is crazy to me. So here's what's interesting. Remember how these same folks used to blast former President Trump <laughs> over his border policies. You've got far left Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez crying at the border. She says now that immigration is arguably the Biden administration's weakest issue. Interesting comment from her. Is she right? Well, it's interesting. I haven't seen her crying. Oh, and there's that photo. I haven't seen her crying mm. in an empty parking lot since Biden took office. But I will tell you that it has been like pulling teeth to get Democrats down to the border. But this is not a Republican or a Democrat issue. This is an American issue. And without a secure border, we are not a sovereign nation. And there are so many people coming across from over 151 different nations that we have to know who's coming. We have to know their intentions. And when you have fentanyl, the number one killer of people between the ages of 18 and 45 mm. that is being smuggled across that southwest border, every community in America is now a border town as a result of these policies. And so I have said repeatedly, you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. Mm. They are asking for a major disaster to happen as a result of the open border policies of Biden. So while he's evading responsibility for this, at the same time, he's telling New York's private businesses they got to step up requesting $600 million to offset a potential $12 billion problem. Let me just focus on this part for a second. None of the math adds up. And one of the biggest reasons is because there's no root solution to the problem, which means the money would just have to keep flowing. I just, I don't see how we can send money to these cities when it's a blank check at this point, Congresswoman. 
Well, that's exactly right. The, the left's answer for everything has always been throw money at a problem and hopes it go away. That doesn't work. If you want to actually solve this problem, what you need to do is secure the border, continue building the border wall. That is a force multiplier. Implement the technology, but more importantly, enforce the laws that are on the books. The Trump era policies were the right policies. That is why we had record low uh, illegal immigration during the Trump administration. That is why we need to get back to that. So if they just enforce the laws on the books, we don't need to keep yeah. throwing taxpayer money at a problem and hope it goes away. People are hurting out here. Uh, heck, I'm here on yep. uh, Ground Zero at Horseshoe Beach, where we actually need resources. People's homes and their livelihoods have been stripped away in a blink of an eye. That's where we need to be yes. focusing, is on American citizens, putting so, them first. I wanted to ask you about that. Obviously, we can see you there, and thank you for sharing your time with us today. How is it going? Your district was hit hard. You can see the wreckage behind you. How's the recovery going, Congresswoman? Well, I can tell you right now, my district being kind of ground zero here, Horseshoe Beach, pulling in, it's gut wrenching. It brings tears to your eyes seeing how much devastation has taken place so quickly. Behind me, this was a home just about 72 hours ago. Mm. It no longer exists. This family has been here for 40 years. Uh, their kids grew up here. I met them here today, and it just breaks your heart. When you see the friends and family, though, of all these folks who have lived here, who work here, coming out and helping, this is all behind me happening at the behest of locals. So there's a lot of forgotten areas up and down the coast. This is why it's called the Forgotten Coast, in addition to the Nature Coast, because there's so many small towns that are multi-generation families. We also are sustaining huge ag losses, aquaculture, for example. We had a lot of saltwater intrusion that came in that has ruined entire crops. Mm -hmm. This is a devastating storm that is going to have implications for not just weeks and months, but years. Well, we, we thank you for being on the ground, having a sense of the situation, knowing what's needed. I hope your leadership is very effective there, and we're certainly praying for all the folks in that area. Congresswoman Kat Kamek, thanks for being with us today. We appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you.